Hello again. Welcome back to Using the Debugger. In the last lesson, we learned how to step through a running program and examine the contents of variables. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to add watch expressions and how to run code snippets at any point in a program. Then we'll put our new skills to work as we debug the My Library class. Let's open the My Library class for editing. We'll go run debug as Java application. This opens the debug perspective. We go to our first breakpoint. Takes us to line 160. Now we've got a second breakpoint defined, so if we hit resume, we go to line 166. And then let's go to line 168 using our run to line. So I click on 168, go control R, and that steps us down to line 168. Now as we saw in the last lesson, the variables view lets us see the value of variables in real time. But what if we want to see the value of an expression that is not a simple variable? Let's look at one way to do this, which is to add a watch expression. So we'll go Window, Show View, we'll show the Expressions view, that'll open it up, up in this upper right hand area. If we right click, we can select Add Watch Expression, and we can type any expression in here that we want. So for example, we can type su.getName, press OK. We can see that this expression is highlighted in red, and if we expand, it says Sue cannot be resolved. And that's because we haven't executed line 168 yet, so Sue hasn't been declared. If we step over line 168, now we see that Sue.getName equals unknown name. One limitation of adding watch expressions in this manner is that we can't use Eclipse's Code Assist or Content Assist inside where we type in the expression. Now here's a trick we can use to get around this. We'll select Window, Show View, Display, and that opens up a new display view down at the bottom of our screen. Now here we can type any Java expression we like and we can use Code Assist, just like in the Java editor. So let's type su.getName again. This time we can go su.control space and use our Content Assist. Now if we highlight it, right click and say Inspect, we get this displayed in the inspect pop-up window and if we do control shift I it moves that up into our expressions view so we can type with content assist down here do two control shift I's and it moves it up here now here's a small catch notice that the decoration next to the first one is this X plus Y, whereas the decoration next to the second one is our inspect magnifying glass. This means that this is just a snapshot. It's not an actual dynamic watch expression at this point. If we step over line 169, we can see that. We're setting the name to Sue, and we can see that our watch expression got changed to Sue, but our little snapshot inspect didn't get changed. Fortunately, this is very easy to fix. We can just select on this right click and say convert to watch expression and that converts the snapshot into a watch expression. Now this view lets us watch any Java expression, not just variables. Let's add another expression by typing something in the display, let's type test library dot get books dot size. Again, we'll select it, 
We'll do Control Shift I twice. Then we'll come up here, right click, and say Convert to Watch Expression. Now we'll step over lines 171 and 172, and we can see that this value changes from 0 to 1 to 2. Here's one more thing to note about the display view. This view allows us to type in any valid Java code snippet and execute it, just like we could do in the Eclipse scrapbook. For example, we can type system out println test library equals plus test library to string. Put a semicolon on there, highlight it, right click, and say execute, and it prints this out in the console view just as if it was running from inside a regular Java application. So we can use the display view as kind of a scrapbook while we're debugging. Now at this point, we've learned all of the basics of debugging our Java programs in Eclipse. We've seen how to launch a program in debug mode, how to set and use breakpoints, how to navigate with the step commands, and how to examine the value of variables and expressions. Now we're ready to apply what we've learned to fix some bugs in our My Library class. In test-driven development, we write unit tests before we write our actual classes and methods. If the unit test fails or has errors, we know that we have a problem to fix in the class under test. In our debugger tutorial project, we've been given a project that has some problems. Now let's run our tests. We'll go back to the Java perspective. We'll open up the test folder. We'll open up all tests. And we'll select run run as JUnit test and we can see we've got five errors and one failure. Now if the person writing these classes had been following good test driven development practices we might not be in this position. But regardless of how we got here we now need to debug these classes and get them working. Now let's start with the My Library test class. Let's run this one test again and see what we have. So double click there, run, run as JUnit test, and now we just have the results for the My Library test. If we look at the failure trace in the JUnit view, it tells us that we have a null pointer exception. Below that is a stack trace. Notice that this looks a lot like the stack trace that we see inside the debug view in the debug perspective. Each one of these represents a frame with a line number and so forth. This shows a snapshot of the stack at the time that the error was encountered. Just like in the debug view, the top line of the stack trace shows the line that was just about to execute. In this case, line 111 in the My Library class. The line below that shows where the method was called from, in this case the checkout method, and that was called in turn from the test checkout book method. If we click on the second failing test, we can see its failure trace, and again, it's failing on line 111 in mylibrary.java. And if we look at the next one, again it's 111, and the get unavailable books, 111. So all of these tests are failing at the same line. At this point, we know what line of code is causing the failures. Now let's start a debug session and figure out the problem. We can run JUnit tests in debug mode just like we did with the MyLibrary main method. First, we'll put a breakpoint in line 111, which is where we're getting the error. So if we go down and double click on the stack frame, it takes us right to line 111 in the MyLibrary class. If we double click, 
that sets a breakpoint. Before we start the new debug session, let's go back to the debug perspective. We can see that we still have our old debug session running. Now Eclipse will allow us to run multiple debug sessions at one time, but in our case, let's keep it simple by terminating this session before we start the new session. So we'll return to the Java perspective. We'll open up My Library Test. Make sure that's selected. Then we'll go Run, Debug As, and this time it's Debug As JUnit Test. And that will start the test, start the debug session, and pause us here at line 111. First, let's look at the stack frames. These top three stack frames are what we expect. We are in line 111 in the Get Books for Person. We got there by running the checkout method, and we got there by running the test checkout book method. Now below these top three are frames for a number of methods that we didn't write. And these frames are related to the JUnit classes. For example, if we go down here to the very bottom, we can see that we ran the main method in Remote Test Runner. This explains how we're able to run JUnit tests inside Eclipse. Underneath, Java is really running the main method in this Remote Test Runner cl test class, and then that in turn is running our test classes. Now let's examine our variables at this point. First, we'll go back to the top stack frame so we can see the variables that apply to line 111. If we expand a book in the variables view, we can see its author and that the person field is null. If you recall, a null person field indicates that this book is not currently checked out to anyone. Now let's try inspecting some expressions. We can inspect expressions either by typing them in, for example in the display view, or we can highlight an existing expression in the edit view. Let's highlight a book.getPerson. Highlight that. We can right click, say inspect, and we can see a book.getPerson is null which is the same as up here. Now here's a cool trick when highlighting expressions. When doing this, we need to make sure that we have a valid expression. For example, if we try to highlight a book get person and we forget the parentheses, we get an error message cannot be resolved because it's not a valid expression. Sometimes when you have a complicated expression, it can be tricky to make sure you get exactly the right part. Now, a trick in Eclipse is if we click anywhere in an expression, then hold down the Alt and Shift keys and hit the up arrow, it automatically highlights the innermost expression. If we hit the up arrow a, a second time, it expands out to get a larger expression. and We can hit the up arrow another time to get a still larger expression and continue doing this, and then we can hit the down arrow to reverse the process, and at each point we have a valid expression. So using this trick, let's inspect a book.getPerson.getName. So we'll click on a book, Alt Shift up arrow once, twice, three times, and then I'll use the shortcut Control Shift I to inspect, and we get a null pointer exception. So now we have confirmed exactly where our null pointer exception error comes from. It comes from this expression when we try to use the getName method on the null person. At this point, we'll end the lesson and terminate our debug session. In this lesson, we learned about watch expressions and we started debugging the My Library class using our JUnit tests. In the next lesson, we'll learn about exception breakpoints, we'll fix this line of code, and continue debugging the My Library class. 
Along the way, we'll look at some other powerful Eclipse debugger features. This is the end of Lesson 3. I'm Mark Dexter saying, so long for now.